Hello and welcome back to I Speak Spoke Spoken. My name is James and today we're going to be doing a quiz in 14 advanced English words. Just remember these are very, very advanced words. So if you don't know them just yet, don't worry, but you can quiz yourself today and see how much you do know. And if not, you can learn some new words today. So that's perfect. So the first question here is the company's policies led to significant environmental damage. So our answers here are beneficial, pernicious, basic, or helpful. Which one do you think it is? Yes, the company's pernicious policies led to significant environmental damage. So what do these words mean? Let's go through them. Okay, so remember when we have the red next to the word, these are very good words to remember and just practice and keep on going over them as much as you can and you will remember them. So let's go through this one. So beneficial, beneficial. Yes, perfect. So beneficial, it's good for something. It's helpful for something. Pernicious, pernicious. That's great. So pernicious actually means when something is damaging something, it's, it's hurtful to something. And that's why, yes, um, so uh, that's why, yes, the company's pernicious policies led to a significant environment, um, environment damage. It's hurtful to the environment, as you can see. Basic. Can you repeat? Basic. Okay. Basic means that it is easy. It's simple. It's easy. And last but not least, helpful. Helpful means that it is helping people. It's, it, it's, it, it helps you to do something. So it's a helpful thing. Um, and that is perfect for number one there. Okay, so question number two. So despite numerous suggestions for compromise, the committee remained in their decision. So it's either A, flexible, B, intransigent, C, agreeable, or D, yielding. So what do you think it is? I'll give you three seconds. Yes, it's intransigent. So what do these words mean? So flexible here. Flexible means that something is very easily bent. Their resolve is very flexible. They're very easily swayed into maybe doing other, maybe they wanted to do one thing and they're very easily convinced to change what they want to do. And that means they are flexible. They're, they're, they're flexible in what they're doing. Um, they can change their plan um, quite easily. Intransigent is the opposite here. So intransigent means they're firm. They, they're not changing at all. They're doing what they wanted to do no matter what anyone else says. All right, and that is why it's our meaning, because the committee remained intransigent in their decision. They were firm. Lovely. So agreeable. What does agreeable mean? Agreeable is a... So someone who is agreeable is the kind of person who agrees with everything. So maybe someone says, okay, so the star... The sky is yellow. The sky isn't yellow, but maybe the other person might go, oh, yeah, yeah, the sky is yellow. So this is an, a very agreeable person, someone who agrees with everything, no matter what. Okay, so yielding. Yielding is very similar to flexible here. So it's something that is very easily bent. So, so something that you can, it's, it's, it's very easy to bend to different things. It's, it's a flexible thing. Um, and that is what yielding means. Can you repeat the word yielding? Yielding. Remember, keep your mouth wide open. Ye yielding. So, perfect. Lovely. So, next question here. The character in the novel hatched a plan to overthrow the government. So, the answers are either A. Noble B. Nefarious C. Straightforward or D. Harmless what do you think it is? Yes, it's nefarious. So what do these words mean? Let's have a look. Noble. 
Noble means when someone has a lot of pride. It's like they're, they're a noble person. They're not, they're not going to kill someone just for the sake of it in, in maybe this kind of um, s scenario here where, where maybe they're overthrowing a government. They're not going to do that. They are noble. They care about their, they care about how people see them. They're, they're very kind of well to do, well to do noble, you see. So that is how we use noble. And just remember, in the top right corner of the video here, we have a, we have a link which will have everything that we have, that you can see behind me, um, in the link. And we also have a quiz down there that you can do. And you can see it also down in the description below and it's all free of charge. So you can go there and let us know how you did. We, we would love to hear. Next up, we have um, four. Her moods are quite... One minute she's joyful, the next she's upset. So it could be her moods are quite steady, A. B, capricious. C, constant or D, unchanging. Perfect, it's capricious. So what do these words mean? So steady means it's very still, it's not moving much, which when we're talking about moods means that it's very, it's on a level, it's not moving all that much and this is kind of a steady mood. Next up we have capricious which is the opposite of a steady here. So we, capricious is all over the place. It's, it's like a wave here. So it's a capricious mood. So, and that's why it's here because her moods are quite capricious. One moment she's joyful and the next she's upset. It's all over the place. Next up, we have constant. Constant means it just keeps on going. It's, 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 for, it's forever going. It's, it, it does not stop. And last but not least, we have unchanging, meaning that it is constantly the same. It's, it's, it's staying the same. It's, it's unchanging. Lovely. Question five. The professor's lecture on quantum physics was so that only a few students could follow it. And our answers are A, simple, B, clear, C, esoteric, and D, known. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Lovely, so our answer is esoteric. And let's have a look at what these words mean and see how esoteric links, uh, and see how esoteric fits in this sentence. So, what is simple? Simple means easy. It's very easy. It's very simple. It's, 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 it's not that difficult. And um, I don't think that is the answer when it comes to this level of quantum physics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. And next up we have clear. So clear means it is very easy to understand. It's, it's very clear. It's, there's, there's, no, there's not too much kind of that will that will make you feel like you don't understand it is very understandable is very clear nice one esoteric what this word means is that only a few people are gonna either be interested in it are gonna like it it's quite it's quite niche to a few people there like only a few people are going to be interested um, and that's how we say that can you repeat after me esoteric esoteric good job Okay, last one. We have known. Known. Known means that everyone already knows. And if they already know, they don't need to be in the lecture. So this is definitely not the answer here. Um, so the, the physics lecture on quantum physics was so esoteric that only a few students could follow it. Um, and that is why. Question number six. Using a typewriter in the modern office is an A, anachronism, B, advancement, C, norm, or D, expectation. So which one do you think it is? Perfect, it is an anachronism. So using a typewriter in the modern office is an anachronism. 
the word anachronism means that it doesn't fit in that specific time that you're talking about. So a typewriter is something that is of the past. Not many people use typewriters nowadays. We use our phones, our laptops, but in this sentence, we're talking about how the fact that someone is using it is quite strange nowadays. We're not used to that. Um, so it is an anachronism. Okay, what is an advancement? Can you tell me well, what is an advancement? Yes, so an advancement is when something is better, is better than, than what it is. So maybe um, we have an advancement in the technology that we're using, which means it's even better than it was. It's advanced into the future. Um, okay, what about norm? What is a norm? A norm is something that is normal. It's, 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 it's something that is, ve is very common and it happens very often. Lovely. Next up, we have an expectation. What is an expectation? So an expectation is something that you can expect. It's something that you would think of when you think of that thing. If you were to think of a typewriter in the modern office, you might be like, oh yeah, that's expected, but it's not. And that's why we have an anachronism here. Um, that's great. So next up, we have question seven. The politician was often criticized for being a always promoting military action. So we have question, we have answer A, a pacifist, answer B, a diplomat, C, a warmonger, or D, a negotiator. Okay, so have a few seconds. And time's up. So the answer here is a warmonger. So yes, we have four words here and this is what they mean. So a pacifist is someone who cares about um, peace. They don't want to fight. They don't want, they don't want war at all. And um, this is what a pacifist is and, and they don't want to fight at all. A diplomat is someone who would much rather solve something by talking about it and by having conversations and trying to sort it out in that way. Um, so they will use diplomacy. Um, okay, a warmonger is someone who enjoys the idea of war. They kind of, that, that's, that, that's what they want. They, so they're always promoting military, um, military action, you see. It's the first place that their mind is going to, um, and that is war, as you can see in the name warmonger. Okay, negotiator. What is a negotiator? A negotiator is someone who, a bit like a diplomat, would decide to have a conversation about something, to negotiate the terms of something, to, to figure out how you can overcome something without fighting or something like this. All right, so next up we have question eight. In many historical events, one group or individual was made the for larger societal problems. Okay, so we have answer A, hero, answer B, a leader, answer C, a scapegoat, or answer D, a solution. So have a few seconds here. All right, so the answer here is a scapegoat. And let's have a look at the meanings of these words. So, a hero, what is a hero? If, you've if you have read a lot of books and stories, you may have heard of a hero. So a hero is someone whose goal is to defeat the villain, to, to, to win the story. And, and it's usually in a book, the person that we're following. Um, and there we go, so a leader, what is a leader? A leader is someone who may be in charge of multiple people. And to be a good leader means that you're good at managing people. You're good at getting people to do what, they, what, what you want them to do, you see? Uh, fabulous. What is a scapegoat? What is a scapegoat? So a scapegoat is almost the perfect person to blame. 
So in a situation when maybe people don't want the blame put on them, they will put the blame on a scapegoat. Or maybe in other situations, the scapegoat will be the, the perfect person to blame there. Last but not least, we have the solution. What is the solution? The solution is what you have to do to succeed. It is what will help you succeed in that, in that situation. So next up, we have question nine. Well done, everybody. You're doing really well. So the speaker captivated the audience with her endless anecdotes and stories. Okay, so answer A, we have quiet. Answer B, loquacious. Can you, can you repeat that? Loquacious. Loquacious. Good job. That's not an easy word, so just keep practicing. Um, silent. Perfect. And reserved. Perfect. So I'll give you a few seconds to have an answer to, to get your answer there. Okay, so the loquacious speaker captivated the audience with her endless anecdotes and stories. So what does this mean? So a quiet speaker would be someone who is talking very quietly. Their, their voice is going down in volume. Okay, so that is someone who is quiet. Loquacious is someone who is talkative. They speak a lot. They like to say stories and just kind of speak about everything. So this is a loquacious person. Someone who is silent is even quieter than quieter because they're not saying anything. They're absolutely silent. Um, and it's difficult to be a silent, uh, a silent speaker. <laughs> uh, next up, we have reserved. What does reserved mean? So reserved means that someone is maybe a bit nervous. They're a bit standoffish. Like, like they're not going to be the first person to speak. They're a little bit nervous. So they aren't going to be speaking about endless anecdotes because they're going to be a little bit more timid um, and a bit more shy and a bit shy. There you go. So question 10. His, for knowledge, made him spend hours in the library every day. So answer A disinterest. Answer B, veracity. Answer C, apathy. And answer D, indifference. Okay, so I'll give you a few moments there. Okay, so what was your answer? Um, it, the, so the correct answer is B, veracity. So his veracity for knowledge made him spend hours in the library every day. And what veracity means is his strong thirst, like he, he really wants that knowledge. It's almost when someone is obsessed with that knowledge, like they really want it. So that is what veracity means. What does disinterest mean? Disinterest means when they're not interested in something. Uh, they, they, they don't care about it at all. Apathy. What is apathy? You may have heard the word empathy. And this is the opposite of that word. So empathy means that you care about other people's feelings. Um, whereas apathy means that you don't at all. Like it's, it's not at all entering your mind. Uh, so apathy is the opposite of empathy. Great. So indifference. What does indifference mean? Indifference means you just don't care. It's like you, you have absolutely no care about this. You're very indifferent to that situation. All right. Nice one. Question 11. The events unfolded, leading inevitably to the downfall of the empire. So, answer A, randomly. Answer B, inexorably. Answer C, unexpectedly. And answer D, occasionally. So, what is the answer? I'll give you a few seconds. Perfect. So, if you said inexorably, you are correct. So, the events unfolded inexorably, leading inevitably to the downfall of the empire. And what this means is it was in a downward spiral. There was no stopping it once it had started. So, that's what inexorably means. There's no way to stop that thing. 
Okay, randomly. What does that word mean? Randomly means that it, if something was picked out of a bag, maybe you're picking something at random. You're not choosing to pick that specific thing. You have multiple things and you're picking something at random. All right. Next up, we have unexpectedly. What does unexpectedly mean? Unexpectedly, unexpectedly means when you didn't have a pre-thought about that thing. You were expecting something else, maybe. Um, and actually, the thing that happened was not at all what you thought was going to happen. It was unexpected. It was it, it. It happened unexpectedly. Okay. Occasionally. What does occasionally mean? Occasionally means that it happens from time to time. Every now and then, it occasionally happens. So, question 12. The CEO faced a either invest in new technology and risk debt or maintain the status quo and risk obsolescence. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. A, solution. B, conundrum. C, clarity, and D, answer. Okay, have a look at what you think the answer is. All right, so our answer is the CEO faced a conundrum. Either invest in new technology and risk debt or maintain the status quo and risk obsolescence. So what do these words mean? A solution. A solution is the way of achieving something. So it's, it's the way to, to, to achieve a goal. It's the solution. Okay, what is a conundrum? This is our answer here. A conundrum is a problem. It's a problem that someone may face. And you may need a solution if you have a, if you have a conundrum. Um, so this is a problem. A problem. Um, and the CEO is facing a problem. Next up, clarity. What is clarity? Clarity is the thing of something being clear. It is very clear. It's very obvious. It's, it's, it's there. You, you don't have to look for it. It's very clear. Great. Next up, answer. The answer is what you say when there is a question. You, you answer a question. You, you, so what is one plus one? One plus one is two. That is your answer. It's perfect. So next up, we have Question number 13. So she offered a of reasons for why the project was delayed. Okay, so we have A, single. We have B, plethora. Please repeat, plethora. Okay, C, lack. Can you repeat, lack? Make sure you get that quick, ah, ah, lack. Very good. And D is shortage. Okay, have a moment and then I will be back with the answer. Lovely. So, she offered a plethora of reasons for why the project was delayed. Okay, so what do these words mean? A single means one. So maybe she offered one reason, but this, this isn't the answer because we have a and we have of. So answered a single of reasons, we couldn't say this. Um, but, and also this is in plural form. So, plethora means a number, quite, quite a few, quite, 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 quite a lot. Uh, a plethora, a plethora of things. And this fits here perfectly because we have the plural here and a and of. So, she offered a plethora of reasons, a number of reasons. Next up, we have lack. What does lack mean? What does it mean to lack something? It means that you don't have something. It means you're, you're without that thing. So you're lacking. So maybe someone will go to the school and they're lacking a pen. They don't have that. Uh, so they are without that thing. Next up, we have shortage. What does shortage mean? Shortage means that there aren't enough. That there, there, there are only a few of that thing. There's, there's, there's way less than there should be. So maybe the, the shop had a shortage of drinks. They didn't have enough to serve all the people that they needed to serve. Can you say shortage? Shortage. Shortage. Fabulous. And just so you know, all of the red bits here, you can pause and rewind 
and keep trying to pronounce these words um, because they are the ones that people tend to get mixed up when they're speaking and they tend to get them wrong. So keep practicing those and you'll sound like a native in no time. So remember, you can go to the link on the top right corner of the video and in that link you get everything that you can see behind me and also a quiz that you can take and it's all free and you can also, if that disappears, you can get it down in the description below. So don't worry about that. Um, fabulous. So next up we have question 14. The spy moved through the crowd carefully not to draw attention to himself. All right, let's have a look at the answers. A. Openly. B. Boldly. C. Surreptitiously. And D. Plainly. Okay. Have a moment to see which one you think it is. All right, have you got an answer? Let's see. So the spy moved surreptitiously through the crowd, careful not to draw attention to himself. So what do these words mean? Let's have a look. You, 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 know, you, know, the, you know how we do it by now. So openly means it's something is very like they're, they're being very open about everything like everything's very obvious there they're, they're opening um they're like maybe they're being loud they're being obvious you see they're being open boldly pretty much the same it means maybe they're st walking in this very obvious manner being loud saying hey everybody i'm a spy which definitely isn't the right way of <laughs> being a spy um okay next one surreptitiously Surreptitiously is pretty much the opposite. It means that they are being very, they're, 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 they're not being very obvious at all. They're, they're not letting people, they, people can't see them. Like people can't even tell that they're there. They're being so quiet and like being so secretive and quiet. And it's very not, it's very not, it's not obvious that they're there at all. That's perfect. And last one, plainly. Plainly means obviously. I mean, it means that something is pretty obvious. So our right answer here is surreptitiously because the spy is moving surreptitiously through the crowd. So well done, you've reached the end of the quiz. Let us know how you did down in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video. Remember, like, comment and share. I've been James. This has been I Speak Spoke Spoken in a joyful atmosphere.